So welcome to this uh, new Dr. Flow episode. Today I uh, would like to illustrate how to force flow approval cancellation and how to force uh, flow approval expiration as well uh, in a business scenario. So my name is Dr. Flow. My friend called me Serge Luca. I'm MVP in uh, two branches, in Office 365 and in business application, more specifically Flow. And I'm based in Brussels. The context is a few days ago, I had to do a video with uh, John Levesque from the Flow team illustrating uh, an approval analytics dashboard, how to create an approval analytics dashboard from scratch, which is what is on the screen here. So I create that in uh, something like 20 or 30 minutes from scratch. And behind this, there is a flow. And the logic of the flow is the following. A user submits an expense. If the expense is not cheap, so it's if, if, if the expense uh, value is more than 500 euro, then this expense has to be uh, approved by a first person. If this first person doesn't answer on time, it will escalate to the big boss. And if the big boss doesn't answer on time, uh, it will escalate to the same big boss again and again and again and again until the big boss uh, reacts. And that's actually an old flow that I did uh, several years ago uh, to illustrate uh, approval analytics. So I've reused this flow for the demo and I've changed a few actions. So I've reused the new approval the new flow approval action, so what we used to call the approval V2. Um, and in the past, it was approval, approval V1. Now the V2 have been renamed approval. So by default, when you use approval, it's by default the, the new one, the V2. But the thing is, uh, my flow behaved very differently, and I was surprised. Uh, the thing is, when a flow approval is timeout, well, in the past, it got removed from the approval dashboard. Now it's not the case anymore, which means that end user might end up with plenty of, uh, I would say, timeout approval, which is not which is not good. Okay, so that's something that needs to be changed. So I've alerted the Flow team on this. So they probably changed that. I don't know, but anyway. And the thing is, we don't have any out-of-the-box action for cancelling or forcing an approval expiration. Until several months ago, uh, because the Flow team provided uh, a new way to do so by using the CDS, by using the CDS, uh, the CDS action. Because when you create an approval, the approval information is stored in the common data service. You can you can analyze this data service information, you can list this information, you can update this information as well. The funny thing is, I investigate that again yesterday, and yesterday, by coincidence, uh, Daniel Laskowitz was working on the same, exactly the same feature, so we communicate together. You can watch this video, it's a very nice video, by the way, which is here, so Microsoft Flow Approval Cancellation with Daniel Laskowitz, very nice one. So uh, I will cover some part of what Daniel uh, illustrated quickly, and then I will show you how I did apply that to a more complex uh, context. So first, um, let's take a look at this flow. So this flow starts manually. It creates an approval, <coughs> and the approval details is the following. I will say this is the text. Hello, demo approval again and again. Uh, I'm sending that to user 2, I wait 30 seconds, <coughs> sorry, and after 30 seconds, I will remove that from the dashboard. And to do so, it's very easy. You just need to use get record action and update a record, which are CDS action. That means today you need P1 to use that. Uh, but this discussion on P1 won't make sense because normally everyone will have uh, the P1 features. So get record, <clears throat> and in get record, you just need to pass the 
approval ID coming from the approval that you create before, so the, just the approval ID, and select the approval entity name and the test environment. <coughs> Sorry. And with this information, you can update the record by passing this uh, metadata. So msdin underscore flow underscore approval ID coming from get record, coming from this one. But also here you need to specify complete. The reason could be, in my case, it will be expire, but uh, in Daniel's case, it was cancel, so both work as well. And don't forget to click on the show advanced action uh, options. You need to specify the completion date and time. So you, that's why I've used the current time action just before here. So we can pass that here. And also you need to specify that the status value is inactive. And it just works. So let's run this. Just need to make sure that user2 is there. So it's here. Yes. So first let me check user2 approval center, which is there. OK. And then I'm going to start the flow from user1 to user1. OK. Yeah, it's being saved. <clears throat> and let's run the flow. Let's go to user two. Normally in user two, you will see the uh, approval. Yes, hello, demo approval again, again and it should disappear automatically because we delete it. Okay, now if I refresh this, it got removed in the history, in the received, here we go, hello demo again again, expired 15 seconds ago. Right, so this works and it's easy. Okay, I will get back to this because I've tried to create a Power Apps application that allow any user to approve or to cancel or to remove an, an approval. So let's get back to our flow. Let's illustrate the flow that run behind this website. It's not that complicated. Let me show you how that works. So the flow is triggered when a new expense is created in the SharePoint list. Okay, here. And then I check if the amount is high. If it's not high, it's automatically approved. If it's high, it will have to be approved by a first user. Okay, approval one. And then I wait. And then if the user doesn't approve on time, so on time means, let me check one minute for the demo, yes, one minute, then this scope will be invoked because I'm using the uh, configure run at where I specify this scope will should run when this one is in timeout. And then, then I will remove the previous approval, so you should not forget to remove this one. Okay, current time, get record, pass approval ID coming from the approval before, and update record. Okay, with expire. Cool. And then you can ask the, the manager, so the big boss, to approve again and again. So I've created a loop, do until, until a variable is set to true, and then I will ask Big Boss to approve. So this run in a loop, and basically in the loop, I create the approval, send to the Big Boss. I wait for it, same mechanism. In case of timeout, I do this, 
otherwise I do that, otherwise everything is, is finished, so the approval is, is completed, and in case of timeout, what I do is I remove this approval. So remove Big Boss approval, same code here, okay, same logic, expire, okay, good. By the way, that's something that could be easily handled by a state machine, but anyway. Now I will create a new expense and I will go to a city called Antwerp and entertainment 600 euro so it will have to be approved and okay so normally the flow started and uh, yeah, let's take a look at this. So the item has been created and is currently being approved by a first user who is uh, this guy. And I'm going to wait for the escalation. So the escalation is this guy. So it will take one minute. I will pause the video a little bit. Okay, so now I'm back. This is the big boss. Normally I should have received an approval. It should be in the approval dashboard. down here. Antwerp is there. As you can see, if you don't remove the approval, you end up with a mess like this. Many, many, many time out approval. So that's really messy. So one approval here. After the timeout, it's going to be deleted. So I can... Now, I would like to focus a little bit more on the security aspect of using this uh, update uh, update records, update CDS records. And to do so, I've created a Power Apps application that allow any user to create an approval and to uh, force the approval expiration. Why Power Apps? Because when you use a Power Apps, and actually this Power Apps application called a flow that does the work behind, but when you, when a Power Apps application call a flow, the uh, Power Apps user identity goes to the flow. So the connector in the flow use the current Power Apps user identity. And you will notice that normal user don't have the permission to update the approval uh, entities, the approval CDS entities. So just to illustrate that, I've created a Power Apps application where you can specify a expense title, for instance, Seattle, create an approval. This call a flow that create approval returns the approval ID. And uh, if you check the other user approval ID, you should see now Seattle. Okay, we have Seattle. And now if we click on expire the approval, and if you bring user two approval center back, you refresh it. Normally Seattle has been removed. So that works. So basically I have two flows. Create an approval from Power Apps, very easy. And uh, you just have the Power Apps trigger you grab the approval text right there, create approval where you pass the approval text, you send the approval to uh, user two, and then you return the approval ID back to Power Apps. That's easy. The other one, 
allows the uh, approval expiration, so force the approval expiration. Paragraph trigger, you grab the approval ID, and here in this scope, you just update the record, okay, with the expire settings and other settings as we mentioned before. So that, that works. The problem is, if you share this application with a normal user, it won't work. So let's go to user2, this is user2, who is a normal user, and you go to a city called, for instance, Brussels, click on create an approval, you get an ID, let's make sure that uh, we have an approval task for Brussels. Yes. So now if you click on expired approval, you go back. And Brussels is still there. So it does not work. And if you get back to the flow, you will see that the flow failed. So it failed, and more specifically, in this part, update the record, right? So here, you have a kind of a forbidden error message. So it's probably related to um, a security role that you need to, uh, to upgrade or something. I know the message is a little bit cryptic, but the way you can fix that, because user one, who is the user who did create the uh, Power Apps application, is actually an uh, environment administrator, but you don't want any normal user to be an environment, environment administrator. So the way to fix that is to go to the um, environment administration center, you had the user, and you click on assign security role, which will bring this window, and in the window you select the user, <clears throat> and you click on not promote to admin, that's a bit too much, but uh, in manage role, you can specify approval administrator. As you notice, normal user are by default approval user and can also read information from the common data service. They probably can update a few information as well. But now let's promote user two and let's go back to user two window, perhaps. And you say, now, please expire the approval. And we go back to the approval center. And normally, Brussels has been removed. Yeah, so that, that works. So don't forget that today, when you use Power Apps, when Power Apps call a flow, the uh, current user identity flows to the flow, uh, which is a big issue for me. Uh, the flow team will fix that. Uh, for instance, when you uh, have a button flow, you can force the uh, flow to use some elevated privilege, right? Not the current user flow if you want. So that's not available yet for the link between Power Apps and, and Flow. But uh, to be honest, I don't think that using the CDS uh, update record is a good thing because you can actually corrupt your approval center, I did it. So what we need is something out of the box, uh, cancel approval and um, force expiration approval, something like this, right? So in the coming video, I will try to get a little bit deeper and to provide you with more details about this. So I hope that you enjoyed and see you later.